for people to get liver damage, you probably need to drink heavily for at least five years. Five years? Yeah. It's quite refreshing. I don't even drink enough. Excellent. Drink more. I wasn't worried about this. Test, I am now. Good. Well, like 90% of us, I do drink alcohol, but I don't actually know how much. So that's the first thing I'm going to find out. By using myself as a guinea pig, we can finally get an honest answer to that age-old question, how much do you drink? And the best way to do that is to film every single drink I have this week. Uh, I'm now in a pub, so not surprisingly, I'm going to have a drink. Uh, beer tonight, only lightly. I'm working tomorrow, and I've come out with a friend and colleague, James May. It's not going to be a big one tonight, I reckon, a few of these. And now comes the traditional debate. What do we eat? Thai. Personally, I think Thai or Chinese. Thai is a bit of an unknown quantity, I think. Or is Chinese, go, oh, but you have to tell, tell oh, us where to go, because I don't know. Oh, 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 might get a beer in. We went for Chinese. Uh, because it's simple. So that's beer number three, prawn cracker number one. This is number four. Number four is approaching, so that's four. Oh, they're only, they're yeah, yeah, yeah. The halves are small. Food, beer, most of it, sadly, and that. It happens. We didn't go crazy. So, day one, two pints of bitter and four bottles of love. Right, it's um, half seven. I've just had a three-hour drive back. I've had a long day at work. It's been pretty miserable, if I'm honest. And I'm going to go in here and I'm going to get myself a glass of wine. And I feel I deserve it. Um, On Thursday, I share a bottle of wine with my wife and I start to realise how these drinks might really add up. The next night, we go out for dinner. I've only just finished the starter, first course, and... The wine's nearly gone, which means, I suspect, we're in a two-bottle situation. It's just the way it works out. And then on Saturday, it's a big flash industry party thing, at which I think I had... Four champagne glasses of black velvet, which is champagne and Guinness, before the awards thing, and then after the awards thing, I had four glasses of champagne and two bottles of beer. And then a bottle of beer when I got home. After that party, there was no way I was drinking the next uh, night. But by Monday, I felt well enough to crack open a beer again. I try not to let the glamour change me, you know? Because uh, it would be easy for it all to go to my head. And that would be wrong. So, three more beers onto the tally. Now I'm counting, it's clear I drink a fair bit more than I realised. Still, only one night to go. We have a bottle of wine and it lasts us how long? Uh, one night. One. You see, nobody's honest about drinking. All right, half a night. I'm not sure which glass this is. I think it's three or four. Not completely sure. I hope that will be the last one of the night. But it isn't. I get through six glasses. Think of it as a celebration of the end of my video diary. I'm sending the tapes off to a GP who's agreed to give me her honest opinion of how much I drink. Now I know that party was a bad night, and I have to say, I am a bit worried about what she might think. But there's no going back now. You know that moment when your doctor says, and how much do you drink? And you think of a number, halve it and say that. Well, this time, trust me, I have been scrupulously honest. And now I'm going to find out just what it means for my health, because I'm going to meet our GP, Claire, in here. Wish me luck. Claire's worked out exactly how many units of alcohol I drank in seven days. The total is 56, which doesn't mean a lot to me, but according to Claire, it's bad news. That puts you into the very heavy drinking range. You're joking? No. When you say very heavy drinking... Well, the standard or the recommended amount for a man is between three to four units a day. Oh, crikey. And... I'm heavy drinking, heavy yeah. drinking is usually looked at as 50 or more units in a week. It's not like I don't spend my evenings under railway bridges drinking whiskey out of bottles in brown paper bags. I'm fairly, I went out a couple of times with mates, and it's not like I went out and had 15 pints on any of those. No, I, mean, I consider myself a fairly standard social drinker. And you probably are a fairly standard social drinker, but the problem is fairly standard social drinkers are now drinking far too much. So you're saying then 
that there are huge, like all my mates for a start, um, walking around as very heavy drinkers. Your drinking is a is similar pattern to probably about a third of the population, men. Now, if we go through your diary, if we go to the party... That'd be the water. Richard, that'd be the water. 17 units you drank on Saturday night. Anything over about eight units in a night puts you into the binge drinking range. That's a binge? That's a binge. Claire reckons I was binging on four nights last week, but I don't think I had eight units. I better find out exactly what a unit is. Let me give you an example. Your drink there, half is a pint. Is that a unit? Half a pint of lime? No, it's not a unit. It would be a unit if it was 3.5% strength, but most lagers and most beers that you buy nowadays are 5% strength. So that's actually 1.5 units of alcohol. In there? In there. Right. And if we look at wine, 125 mils of wine is one unit. Just to show you what a unit of alcohol of wine is... It's in half a, a glass. Yes. And you filled it up to the top. So yes. one unit is just over. Right. Well, it's half of, yeah. of the glass. See, this is why it gets confusing, then, because we don't appreciate... We don't. We, have, we, I, we haven't got a clue. I honestly can't believe that just a few beers with mates makes me officially a very heavy drinker. There must be loads of us. So, a couple of points. Firstly, you'll notice this is a Coke, or not a beer. Secondly, Claire gave me this. It's a unit calculator, and I can use it to work out how many units of alcohol are in different drinks. So, I'm going to take this and this, wander around the pub, and I suspect will ruin other people's evenings by seeing if they know just how much they're drinking. Four. Four pints? No, four units. Two of those max. What's that? Water. Soda water. That's got no units in it. Do you not drink at all? Yeah, I don't drink. Exactly. That's your daily allowance. Easy. Three units is a daily allowance. That's your lot. How are you going to make that last all night? Do you have any idea how many units yeah, in two? You know that. I know that. Yeah, you're right. Why do you know that? Most because that. Well, because that's my job. What do you do? I'm a GP. Oh, no, 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 another one. <laughs> that's a premium lager, 5% volume. It's 2.8 units. Oh. It is. Well, hey! <laughs> You've got a wine! You can't come here and scare me after death. The weekends, I'd probably drink about five glasses of that. Anything up to ten? Ten. Technically, you are a very heavy drinker. So do you worry about alcohol or drinking? Is it something you think about, or...? Not really, because, like, we're only young. Does it make you feel? It made me feel miserable. I'm trying to ruin your night here. Um, take drink, don't care. Fair enough. I'm not the only one who's drinking too much. It's only a weekday, and still more than half the people I speak to are over the daily limit. What I want to know is, is this really damaging our health? You know what? I feel dreadful this morning, and it's not because I was drinking. Because not surprisingly, after what the doctor told me, I didn't drink. But I think it's because of what the doctor said. It worried me, and I didn't sleep well. And this morning I've been looking at stuff on the internet associated with alcohol and uh, it doesn't get much better. Right, not surprisingly, there's actually loads of stuff to look at. Alcohol causes nearly one in ten of all ill health and premature deaths in Europe. Tearing and occasionally rupture of the esophagus, cancer of the esophagus. I'm drinking tea, chronic heart muscle damage. Yeah. Leading to heart failure. Oof. I mean, it's just obvious, isn't it? And look, it's actually shrinking away. This is all very, very gruesome. It's horrible stuff. But this surely is what's happened to full-on alcoholics after 50 years of really going at it. And I'm, I'm just not convinced. I mean, Claire's saying I'm a very heavy drinker. I don't believe that. I mean, it's a few beers with friends. I'm not going on huge three-day benders, and I'm not actually drink. I don't think I'm drinking that much. I still think I need more investigation. I'm still not convinced by this. Obviously, an alcoholic's liver might well be wrecked, but could mine really have been affected? I'm going to meet liver expert Dr Jane Collier. She tells me there are tests they can do to pick up liver damage at an early stage. 
So you use the phrase very heavy drinker, and uh, I discovered in making this programme that technically I am one, which has come as a bit of a surprise, probably about 40 to 50 units, I think, on an average ordinary week. So is it worth doing these liver tests on me? Um, I suspect you might get away and they'll be normal, um, but for people to get liver damage, you probably need to drink heavily, and probably for a man, what you're drinking, more than 50 units a week, probably for at least five years. Now, Just for five years? Well, you have to drink for at least five years, but yes, for five years. But that's yeah, enough to have an effect? It is probably enough to have an effect. Right. Um, I was really hoping you were going to say sort of 50 years as uh, opposed to five no, years. That's... five years. Right. Hang on a minute. My average drinking week has been average for a good 15 years. I think I better get my liver tested before we go any further. Um, so what might this show then? What? It may show nothing. It may show that one of your enzymes called your gamma GT is up, which is, goes up when you're drinking, or it may show evidence of liver damage with your liver blood transaminase. But is that possible at my age? I'm 35 and I drink... Yeah. I mean, is it? Quite possible. Right. Right. I wasn't worried about this. Test, I am now. Good. I've got a bit of a wait for those results, but Jane says it's not just our livers. There's other things to worry about as well, which gives me an idea for an experiment. And I think I know just the people to do it. I'm not in the habit of taking down telephone numbers from strange women I meet in pubs, OK? But I did, because remember I was talking to that teetotaler? What's right. that? Water. Sodium water. I gave her a call and spoke to her and her friend, who does drink. But that's three units. Oh, my God. Oh because I want to test their livers to see if drinking or not drinking has made any difference. But now I've spoken to Jane, I think just testing their liver is not enough. Here's what I really want to do. Remember Kate, she does drink. Well, I want her to give up alcohol completely for a month to see how it affects her health and her life. But there's more, and this is the good bit. Emma is teetotal and hasn't touched a drop in over a year. Now, I've asked her if she'd take up drinking for a month in the name of science. Amazingly, both girls are up for it. So, I've agreed to do this with Richard, not drink for a whole month. Not quite sure how I feel about it. I know it's going to be good for me in the long run, but it's going to be hard. I wasn't quite convinced about actually swapping around with Kate. Kate is like, got to stop drinking that. For her, that's going to be really hard. For me, well, drinking... The question is how much? The main thing's probably going to be to get Luke, my boyfriend, not to drink with me. You've agreed potentially to do this with me, not to drink for a month. How are you feeling about it? Fine. Won't be a problem. It'll be fine. It's you that's going to be the problem. No, it's not. <laughs> going to be drinking um, as from next Tuesday. I think I might have bitten off a little bit more than I can chew. Jane's going to keep track of the girl's weight, blood pressure and liver function. But she's also monitoring their sleep patterns throughout the month and giving them daily tests to do on their mobile phones. These will show whether drinking affects how their brains work. So, let the drinking or not drinking begin. What time is up? This is um, day two. How are you feeling? I'm not enjoying this. It's quite difficult to kind of drink when you don't really drink. We've asked Emma to drink one pint a day, just up to the recommended limits, and she's taking it very seriously. Right, how sad am I? It's right, I am actually going to have a pint on my own. I wanted to have a pint up in my local area, but um, can't, and I don't have time to get up there now, so I'm going to have to go and have a pint on my own for the sake of drinking. Kate used to get through about three bottles of wine a week. Now she's just avoiding the pub altogether. It's Friday night. It is quarter to ten. And I have to say, I am so bored. I've refrained from going out this evening with everyone from work because they were all drinking from four o'clock onwards. I just can't really be bothered with watching them get drunk when I can't have a glass of wine. I feel like one today. After a couple of weeks of drinking, Emma's noticing a difference. It seems to be affecting her reaction times and accuracy on her daily mobile phone tests. Uh, this morning I found my phone test quite difficult. It demands an attention span of pro probably about five minutes, five, six minutes. And towards the end of that, I was flagging. But Kate is reaping the benefits of not drinking. 
I just got back from work and I have to say for the first time in ages on a Monday morning I actually wake up before my alarm at 7 o'clock, I didn't feel tired, didn't feel hungover and was ready and raring to go to work really. Annoyingly the alcohol free lifestyle seems to be winning out but there are downsides. It's not easy staying off it when everybody else is, well, having plenty. Luke gave in last week and had got really, really drunk on Saturday night and I found myself getting really agitated with him. You can wake yourself up, Luke. I was sober, I had to always carry him on the train and normally I'd be fully involved with that but I just I couldn't get into the spirit of it. And Emma seems to have completely forgotten she didn't like alcohol. And you, you're oblivious to the fact that tomorrow's another day and you've got to get up and you've got to go to work and you just want to keep going. And it's affecting her sleep too. I went out and had a couple of drinks and um, I thought that would be fine. And I was feeling okay when I got back in and quickly got myself to bed because it was about, it was gone 12, it was like 1 o'clock. Um, and I just couldn't sleep. I'm not amused, not amused. I've got a big day ahead of me. Uh, this doesn't help. The month is up. I'm meeting Emma and Kate back at the hospital to get the final results. OK, we are all together. Let's, uh, let's find out. So what we do first is talk about what's called the cognitive test, or the way you think. <clears throat> Which was the worst yeah. thing. I hated that. And you got faster with time. So if we turn to you, Emma, drinking oh. away. <laughs> Firstly, there was actually you were much more, much more variability, so it actually varied very much more than it did um, over with you, Kate. And also, you actually started making far more mistakes in the last couple of days. Uh, <laughs> The other thing we did was the sleep study where we measured your movements and you'll be pleased to know that you had about, um, on average, 15,000 movements <laughs> during the course of a night's sleep. Um, and that, was, that occurred when you were drinking before you came off the alcohol for the month. And actually, right. during that month's time, the number of movements actually came down to between four to 10,000. Did you feel you slept better then? I definitely slept better. So alcohol can make you sleep badly and probably make more mistakes. And Jane's also noticed a change in Emma's blood pressure. Interesting, Emma's yours went up a little bit. I mean, it still was within the normal range, but it yeah. did actually see the trend does seem to be Very slightly up. Mm -hmm. And would you say that would be down to Emma drinking when she doesn't use it? Um, it's, it's, certainly alcohol is likely to be a component in that, and we certainly know that, that people who are drinking have high blood pressure, and, you know, if you tell people, if you see someone who's got high blood pressure who's drinking and tell them to stop drinking, sometimes their blood pressure comes down such they don't actually need treatment for their blood pressure. Right, and so now we come to the liver tests. You're young and um, your liver function tests were normal to start with. So oh although you've drunk a little bit in the past, actually liver function tests are, are normal. Um, and as I would expect, they remain normal during the, during the course of the, of the month. <coughs> and so, uh, do you want to know? No, not really. It's been lovely. Thanks very much for taking part in it. All right, go on. They were normal. Thank you. I, knew, I mean, I knew that. I knew that, I knew that, but that's, yes, that is a relief. Improved. It really was, and the girls were relieved too, that the experiment was finally over. So, for instance, this evening, are you going to have a glass of wine? <laughs> yes, you are. She'll be straight down there. And what about, with her and what about you, Emma? Are you going to, this is the uh, big one, really. I, I'm really, at the moment, sick of alcohol, I have to say, from, from my previous uh, last few weeks of, of going out. So you were actually quite looking forward to getting, getting back, back to on normal. the wagon. Yeah. <laughs> So drinking even just over the recommended limits can have a major effect on your ability to function in life. And while my liver is OK now, Jane says if I keep drinking like I am, there's a chance I could end up with liver damage too, all of which is making me depressed. It seems the only safe option might be to cut out alcohol altogether. But I'm not throwing in the towel just yet. There's got to be an upside somewhere. So, been a bit crafty. Bit of research. I've been to the archives and I've pulled out every article I could find to do with alcohol. And what I'm looking for here is good news. I'm looking for stories that tell me, well, it's good for me. That's what I'm after. There you go. Moderate consumption of alcohol protects against some of Britain's biggest killers. <laughs> Give me good. I want good. Look. Anti-aging beer. This is all great stuff, but, well, you know what the papers are like. I think I'd better check with an expert to back it all up. I'll finish this off first. It'd be rude not to, obviously. 
So this is it. My drinking future lies in the hands of Dr. Ashley Brown. He's going to tell me if all this good stuff is really true. And intriguingly, he wants to take me to France because he's done some research into how the way we drink alcohol changes the way it affects us. And he actually does reckon that the French have got a better way of drinking. Yeah, they would have. Ashley says some of those good headlines are really true. A couple of units a day can lower cholesterol levels and help prevent heart attacks. But if you drink more than that, you're more likely to have a stroke. So my 50 units a week isn't really going to count as medicinal then, is it? I really thought you were going to tell me I could get this on the NHS on gutted. Ashley thinks that we're more likely to get the benefits and fewer risks if we drink the French way. They tend to eat when they drink, and apparently that makes all the difference. I sort of know that drinking on an empty stomach is a bad idea, but Ashley says he can prove it to me with, well, it basically sounds like a drinking game, except a bit more scientific. Well, as it turns out, Ashley's French is rather better than mine, which is pretty poor. So I sent him off to find our French volunteer to go drinking with me, and apparently he has, and I'm meeting them here in this bar. So all I've got to do now is, well, have a drink. Ashley is, after all, a scientist, so he hasn't just picked any old Frenchman. Our volunteer, Martin, is exactly the same size and weight as me. I am, in fact, meeting the French version of Richard Hammond. What a meeting of minds. So okay. how much have we got to drink? Well, uh, how much would you normally drink when you go down the pub? I'm sick of telling doctors how much <laughs> I drink. Three or four bottles of beer? Yeah, I think that's no. a reasonable amount. Yeah. OK, let's see how we go. Oh. But beer just gets you drunker, doesn't it? This is what happens. Well, that's not really true. For this experiment, what I've done is I've calculated very carefully the number of grams of alcohol that both of you are drinking. And you're both drinking exactly the same amount of alcohol. Surely it'll be just the same result. Well, apart from the fact that you're drinking quicker and he's eating a meal. The key difference between me and Martin, apart from him being French, is that he's eating with his boobs. Ashley reckons this means far more alcohol will end up in my bloodstream. I really am feeling it. Yeah. it. This is exactly what we do. I've had, what, four... This, that's my fourth bottle of lager, which actually, over a night... Well, you'll probably class it as six weeks' worth of benders, but it's not <laughs> a lot of beer. And it's... Without eating, it's really having an effect. I can feel it now. And that's because I haven't eaten. Yeah. It's gone straight through. Yeah. Martin, half of his wine is still trapped in his stomach and therefore hasn't been absorbed into the bloodstream. But will Ashley's clever theory really stand up to a scientific test? After two and a half hours, I've had four bottles of beer on an empty stomach. Martin, remember, has had exactly the same amount of alcohol, but with food. Let's have a look and see what the breathalyzer tells us. Keep blowing, keep blowing, keep blowing. Wow. It's climbing rapidly. OK, that, that just keeps going. There it is, 126. Oops. Let's see what Martin scores. And this is exactly the same amount of alcohol. Exactly the same amount of alcohol. Keep playing, 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 keep playing. Okay. I'm intrigued. How about that then? Okay, this is a slow rise. I can't believe this. Now, are you sure, Ashley? We've had the same. You seriously had exactly the same amount of alcohol. This is weird. I'm going to tell you the number. <laughs> Eleven. It's less than... It's less than... Eleven. Your, your Eleven. blood alcohol is more than ten times his. My sky-high alcohol levels are more likely to be damaging my heart and brain in the long term, and there are more immediate effects. You're far more likely to fall down the stairs, pick a fight, do something you didn't want to do, sleep with somebody you didn't want to sleep with. All these things happen I wouldn't, because darling. of high blood alcohol levels. No, I, I, I can absolutely see that. But actually, doesn't that mean if I go the French way about it and I make sure I eat when I drink, I can carry on drinking as I am now and I'll be fine. I, it's nothing I'll, I'll get benefit from. Although Martin has less alcohol going to his brain at the moment and he feels less drunk than you do, his liver is still having to process exactly the same amount of alcohol. In fact, the instance of cirrhosis is even higher in the French than it is in the British. 
So, the French haven't quite got the perfect drinking solution. But I do think Ashley may be on to something. You can see the difference on the streets. It's Friday night, and there's no doubt this isn't Britain. Here's how different it is. It's half 11. This is a city, that's a pub, these are some trolleys, and they're not secured in any way, and they're still here, where somebody put them outside the shop. Need I say more? Walking around, I saw it for myself. People eating when they drink. Not drinking in rounds. None of that pressure to get the last pint down. Not drinking just for the sake of getting drunk. That's a decent-sized city. I could be anywhere. And look, there's a kebab shop. And there's me. And I'm British. And nobody else. That says a lot. But in the name of good journalism, I'm going to check out a British town too. And Rua is twinned with Norwich. So, guess where I'm going to spend my Saturday night? Well, I've got to say, they were quite a nice bunch in there, but they were about six deep at the bar, and a lot of people, as far as I can see, really drinking to get drunk. <laughs> Which, let's face it, is what we do in Britain. I don't even drink enough. Excellent. This is more. <laughs> Turns out I'm a very heavy drinker. Are you? Yes, Come I am. <laughs> Ashley was right. The streets of Norwich are completely different to what you'll see in France. In fact, I find out it's got so bad here, they even have a special volunteer service to rescue the people who end up like this. I visit the local hospital, and they tell me that in the UK, an incredible 70% of A&E admissions on a Friday and Saturday night can be as a result of alcohol. And nearly half the pedestrians hit by cars have alcohol in their bloodstream. It's all pretty scary stuff. But the fact is, none of the people I've talked to tonight seem to think it could happen to them. But there's no doubt we've got a problem, because it's not just the people drinking. Even if you never touch a drop, the money spent on it, on policing us when we're drunk, on patching us together when we've fallen apart. This is going to be bad. Hi! <laughs> Exhibit A. <laughs> but what the answer is to all of this, I just don't know. <laughs> The next day, I spend the drive home wondering if there really is any answer. I suppose they could force people to stop by putting up the prices, closing the pubs, or even banning alcohol altogether. But I don't want them to do that. The fact is, I like drinking, and I don't want to be forced to stop. I would love to have finished this programme saying, hey, guess what? It turns out to be really good for you. We should get this stuff on the NHS. But uh, no, I think we all know it can be pretty bad for us. But what do we do? I mean, I don't want to give up altogether. I think the answer is just to be a bit grown up about it. So, I, for one, I'm going to moderate. I'm going to think about how much I'm drinking and try and stick within those limits as far as I can. That way, I can still enjoy the other glass. I'm going to enjoy this one. Cheers. <laughs> Cutting the calories, Californian star Victoria Woods in LA for her big fat documentary tonight at 10.35 here on BBC One. If you've been affected by any of the issues in this programme and would like further information, please call the BBC Action Line on 0800 092 2021. That's 0800 092 2021.